Okay, so I also thank the other organizers. Uh, okay, so I'll talk about uh, fractional diffusion equation description of uh, anomalous heat transport. Uh, so this is work done with uh, my student uh, Aritra Kundu, uh, former postdoc Priyanka, uh, and uh, then Anupam Kundu, uh, Cedric Bernardin in Nice, and Keiji Saito in uh, Kyoto, uh, Yokohama. Okay, so uh, so let me explain what is uh, first. Uh, let me explain what is anomalous heat transport. And uh, so, okay, so let's start with uh, normal, uh, what is normal uh, heat transport. So with the basic uh, idea is like if you, uh, if you take, a, let's say, a, some uh, solid, uh, let's say a rod or something, and connect it to two heat paths at different temperatures, uh, then uh, what uh, you know is that there's heat current flowing through this, and uh, starts at 11, 11, 13. Okay, so there's uh, heat current flowing through this, and uh, if you measure the local, uh, and so you can measure the local temperature everywhere, and so there's a local temperature which is a function of uh, space, and there's a local uh, heat current uh, at any point, uh, and uh, so the heat current is given by uh, gradient of the temperature. So we're just looking at 1D, let's say. So, uh, so this is Fourier's law. And then if you use uh, the fact that energy is conserved, which means that uh, energy density satisfies a continuity equation, uh, then uh, what you get is the heat diffusion equation, which looks like Okay, where the diffusion constant is basically given by uh, the thermal conductivity divided by specific heat of the so this is the thermal conductivity uh, some intrinsic material property and from that you get the heat diffusion equation okay so this is what you uh, normally expect i mean the, from fourier's law I and mean, there's no rigorous proof but this seems to be like a natural thing just from kind of linear response ideas Okay, so now uh, what uh, Fourier's law, some of the implications of Fourier's law are that if you uh, take a rod of system size L, then the current, uh, the, the, uh, so the system, let's say, is in a steady state where the temperature is not changing with time, then the current should scale as uh, delta T divided by uh, length. Okay, and then you expect that the, if you measure the temperature profile, it should be linear if this delta T is small. Uh, and it should look like T of X uh, is equal to so it has to be linear. Uh, and uh, then there are some other uh, things that uh, follow from the fact that uh, heat is uh, uh, heat spreads diffusively. So, for example, if you uh, if you take a rod and you just uh, dump in some energy at some local point, like for example, you just put a laser beam or something locally so initially you have a lot of energy here and if you ask how does the temperature so it's very hot out here and if you ask how does it the temperature spread in time then it would spread like a, a gaussian distribution so this is t of xt as a function of x at different times so you start with pumping some energy and it spreads slowly and if you see how fast it spreads So it uh, spreads uh, like uh, diffusively. Okay, so now what is anomalous transport? So this is a phenomenological law, and uh, you can test it in a microscopic model. And some of the models of uh, where you can uh, try to test uh, heat, uh, this Fourier's law are models like this. In these are one-dimensional systems. So you can take a gas of particles with, uh, let's say, uh, alternate masses. So alternate particles have different masses, and they just collide elastically. Okay, so it's a simple model, the Hamiltonian dynamics. At the ends, you connect to heat reservoirs. Okay. So this is no, uh, one model. It's called a hard particle gas model. Another model is something called a fermi paste ulam chain, where you have particles connected by anharmonic oscillators, and they follow Newton's equations. And again, you connect them to two different temperatures, and uh, then you can ask what is the current in the steady state. Okay, a third sort of uh, stochastic model uh, is a model of uh, is a harmonic chain uh, with usual Hamiltonian dynamics. Plus, in addition, you have some stochastic component, which is such that at some rate you uh, exchange the momentum of near, nearest neighbor particles. So you choose a random pair and just interchange its momentum. 
Uh, okay, so uh, what's common about all these models at, are that there are very few conservation laws. Okay, so uh, so of course at the uh, boundaries you are pumping in energy and so on, so you break conservation laws. But in the bulk, they just have three conserved uh, uh, quantities. Uh, so number of particles is conserved, uh, the momentum uh, of the particles is conserved, total momentum and total energy. Okay, so these are the conserved quantities, and they satisfy local uh, continuity equations. Okay, so that's uh, important that they have uh, just three conserved quantities because they're non, non integrable models typically. Okay, so now in these models, what you find is that, uh, so from large number of uh, numerical studies and simulations, you find that this uh, Fourier's law is not true. Okay, so, so that, that's what mean, uh, anomalous transport means. You find that. Uh, Uh, Fourier's law breaks down. So, uh, how do you see that? So, what you find is that uh, first of all, the current uh, scales with system size as some different power. Uh, so, this is true for these two models, and uh, for the third model, it's uh, it goes as delta t by l to the power half. Okay, so that's uh, one signature that you don't have Fourier's law. Uh, the other thing that you can see is temperature profiles, and what you typically find in these uh, models is that nonlinear temperature profiles. So these are for small temperature differences, and they look like uh, so instead of a linear profile, they typically have some single, uh, sort of singularities at the end. Okay, so this I'm just plotting t as a function of x. It's in units, uh, in scale, rescaled units. Okay, so these are two signatures. And the third, of course, you can also do the experiment where you just uh, put a heat pulse and see how it spreads. And uh, so if you do that, uh, you'll find again some, uh, sp uh, some profile. But now this distribution is not a Gaussian distribution. It's actually very close to a Levy distribution. And the size of this packet spreads as okay, four minutes. Uh, okay, so uh, so these are various indications of like uh, transport is not normal. Uh, okay, and so now there's some indication that uh, whatever heat carriers, they are not doing a, a random walk that would give diffusion, but they are doing what's called a Levy walk. Okay, and uh, so in one of the models, uh, 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 this model, uh, it was exactly uh, shown kind of uh, mathematically that uh, if you are on the infinite line, then the temperature satisfies what's called a fractional diffusion equation. Okay, so the equation is uh, del T temperature is uh, instead of the diffusion equation. You have something uh, like, uh, so there's some constant, and then you have, so you have a uh, fractional power here, okay. So what does this mean on the infinite line, let's say? So what uh, the, this uh, uh, fractional equation basically means that if you, uh, for the diffusion equation, if you act on del x square or on uh, any Fourier component, then of course this gives minus q square to the power i q x. And the definition of this operator is that Yes, okay. So uh, then, of course, auto, uh, if uh, uh, so, this means that uh, if you look at the temperature distribution starting from delta function initial conditions, then you will immediately get a Levy distribution. Okay. So for this particular um, harmonic exchange, uh, momentum exchange model, it was shown that you can actually derive this equation. Okay. So, but this is on the infinite line. Okay. So one open question. So if you start from a random walk model, of course, you can derive from a Levy walk you can derive this equation in some scaling limits, right? if you go to some appropriate scaling limits. Uh, but the big question was uh, deriving it from a completely microscopic model. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, yeah. okay, so now one uh, other open question was, I mean, uh, study the same problem, but in a finite geometry with open boundary conditions, like you actually connect to reservoirs. Okay, so not with like infinite line. So, uh, Finite uh, 
Okay, and then, uh, so how do you define this operator on a finite domain? That's kind of a tricky question. And uh, so you might think that instead of iterator iqx, you can take some basis functions like sine qx or cos qx and try to define uh, this operator as uh, like uh, maybe uh, this acts and gives something uh, q to the power 3 by 2 sine qx, uh, where, uh, and or you could take cos qx. But then there are questions of what boundary conditions you should take and what are the values of Q, and it's not very uh, clear how to define it. Okay, so this is the question we wanted to address. And, uh, and uh, so what we, uh, what we have done in this recent work is actually start with a microscopic model, which is a slightly simplified version of, uh, uh, of this uh, model, where instead of three conserved quantities, you have just two conserved quantities. Uh, but the model still exhibits anomalous transport. And uh, in that model, uh, what you can show is that you can actually derive uh, the corresponding uh, uh, fractional diffusion equation completely exactly. Okay, so what is the model? So the model basically is again a chain of uh, particles connected by kind of springs. Uh, and, uh, and then of course you have reservoirs. Uh, okay, so this is the two component or uh, two conserved So at each side you have a variable eta1, eta2, eta i. So you don't have a position and momentum, you just have etas, uh, just one variable. And the equations of motion are just eta i dot equals to eta i plus 1 minus eta i minus 1. And then you have, of course, the boundary uh, Langeva heat baths. Uh, so heat baths. And then uh, you also have uh, exchange process. Okay, so you exchange eta i and eta i plus one. Uh, so I have three minutes. Okay, I'll take maybe one minute. Uh, and uh, so you have exchange of. Okay, so in this model, what you can do is you can. Uh, it turns out that for this dynamics, you can write an exact uh, set of equations for. Uh, for two point correlations, okay. So the conserved quantities in this model are eta i and eta i square, okay. So you have just two conserved quantities. Uh, you can think of this as volume and uh, energy, okay. And uh, now you can write uh, like exact equations for uh, these quantities. So two point correlations form a closed set of equations. Even though it's a non integrable model, somehow the two point correlations close upon themselves, okay. And then, uh, so these are of course n, uh, n square equations. Uh, and what you can then do is that you can go to some scaling uh, limit where you define i minus j by root of uh, n is equal to some variable x and i plus j by root n equals to y and uh, time as uh, i uh, t by uh, n to the power 3 by 2. So in this, uh, uh, if you do some this sort of rescaling, then this, uh, uh, this uh, set of equations are reduced to some linear uh, partial differential equations. Okay, and this linear partial differential equations, uh, yeah, which I won't write, uh, but basically they lead you to, do, uh, so if you look at this, the temperature is given by eta i square, okay, because that's the energy. So that's like the temperature, so this equation also contains the temperature field. Okay, so, uh, so basically then the final uh, result that we get is for temperature you can write an equation uh, which is given by uh, E. So Y is like I plus J by root N and this is really like the position across the, uh, across the chain. Okay, so this is equal to, so it's like in the form of a continuity question, del, del Y of something and this something is like uh, dy prime. Okay, so it's some non-local equation, uh, uh, which uh, is like derivative of some uh, quantity. So it's in the form of a divergence, so it's a continuity equation. And this is really the current. And then actually we can actually solve this equation completely uh, in the finite domain and uh, we are able to find the temperature profile exactly which is nonlinear, some nonlinear function. We can find the uh, 
current uh, as a function of size exactly so it's of course goes as one by so the current uh, uh, so the current goes as one by into the power half and we can even find this prefactor and the temperature goes as one minus uh, y to the power half uh, so uh, and uh, then we can also find not only this the steady state properties but we can also look at the like approach to the steady state uh, time dependent properties completely okay. so basically the main uh, message is uh, uh, for a system with anomalous transport we have a complete description of what uh, the diffusion equation does for uh, systems with normal transport okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so Stokes tension usually, I guess it's in 3D, I mean, or three dimension, right? So, of course, three dimension, I, we don't know how to do anything. First of all, we don't even know if there's anomalous transport. So, this is just one dimension. Uh, so, uh, can, this equation can be written as a fractional diffusion equation again? The equation you okay, write? Right, yeah, yeah. So, this one, uh, it's, uh, if, you, uh, if you do the same thing on the infinite line, basically reduces to the exactly the but it's a different fractional equation it is oh. slightly different no, no it's not uh, it, uh, so it has two terms I mean it has a uh, uh, this term and then there's a gradient of uh, del x to the power one-fourth so it's a slightly more complicated equation uh, so uh, two, uh, two comments one is you somehow contrived finally to turn that into something looking a lot like the Zim model of polymer dynamics right where you have a polymer chain with high dynamic yeah, interactions, yeah, yeah. almost exactly that. Yeah. Second thing, I mean, the equation you start with doesn't obviously look like any of the high dynamic equations one would have written down. In some very clever way, you've uh, managed to find something that has the right structure. But is eta to be thought of as a velocity? Because if it is, then why is there only a first, what looks like a first derivative spatially on the right hand side? Right? If you look at the, no, look at, look at your microscopic equation, right, eta yeah. i dot. It, it, uh, no, you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's sort of, you know, it's not obviously an imitation of the particle dynamics, is it? Uh, okay, so if you wrote hydrodynamic equations, of course, you wrote, right, okay, so here the current is, of course, just uh, eta itself, right? It's a eta itself, uh, yeah. And you'd have another equation, eta x square uh, equals right. to something. Some other, yeah, but uh, that's different. I'm saying that's different from the momentum equations. I'm just, it's, did you, so did you try to build like this by equation. starting with the original model or did you somehow... No, it's we start with this model only. No, no, but the basis for the grounds for writing down that model, yeah. the connection of that model to any of these is not so obvious, right? Or is oh, it obvious? No, no, no. This is just a simplified model. Uh, instead of three conserved quantities, you can, uh, but actually, pretty much what I'm doing here, one can repeat it for uh, this cross thing also. And uh, for this uh, uh, system, you can get an equation which is kind of like close to this. But you can't get it as explicit as this model. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, it's more or less the same. Anyway, okay. Right. It's very nice. <laughs> the, the heat bath uh, as a temperature, which, I mean, heat bath is an equilibrium all the time, right? right yeah. That appears in that equation as some kind of a boundary condition? Uh, in this equation, as a boundary condition, that's right, yeah. That's just a boundary condition. Okay, so let us thank the speaker.